Cool. Um, all right. Well, our second speaker for today is Martina. And um, for those that don't know, Martina is a has just advanced to candidacy, right? Martina did yes. her uh, her uh, proposal defense the last semester, or was that the beginning of this semester? I don't oh, remember. December. <laughs> December of last semester. And so um, has been making awesome progress and has, uh, has some more to share with us today. And so the title of Martina's talk today is the development and testing of algorithms to perform inference about environmental adaptation and species abundance in population genomics and metagenomics. Thank oh. you, Dave. It's a mouthful, I know. Um, so I'll be talking today about actually two projects. Uh, so it will be pretty tight on time, but I just want to talk about them both because they kind of both go together. Um, so genomic data provides us with possibility uh, to learn how the environment structures the genetic makeup of organisms and abil ability to identify species abundance. And modern analytical tools out there, they haven't been really explored in terms of what parameters specifically contribute to the markers of elevated genetic differentiation. So for the first project, I am doing a simulation-based studies to observe the um, effect of interactions of divergence selection and other parameters that co contribute to it. And I'm using approximation, approximate Bayesian computation method. For the second project, I investigate the effectiveness of different software clustering algorithms and the proximity ligation method called HiC to reassemble metagenome assembled genomes known as MAGs. So I'll start with the first project. Uh, divergence selection with migration is a common uh, biological phenomenon. And previous studies have published promising results uh, using the likelihood free method called ABC to compare model selection, for instance, um, uh, coalescent times, how long it takes for mixing populations uh, to, to, to mix, or effective population size. Uh, however, the divergence selection estimation using the unmixing populations using ABC has not been well studied. So I'll start with my model here. Oops. Uh, click. There you go. Uh, so it looks a little bit like a cartoon. Uh, but the main point is here, so I'm simulating a lot of data sets because ABC method uses simulation-based data. And you can see there is a lot of parameters uh, that contribute to this whole model. And the, all these parameters, they're sampled. So there's stochastic effect, they're sampled from their own distributions. And so this model is meant to be applied to um, yeast. It's known as fast-evolving model organism. And here we have two populations that are known to differ by specified number of SNPs. And we want to estimate the divergence selection, the selective pressures between the two populations. But we need to look at other parameters, such as migration rate, stroke of migration rate, and also mode of reproduction. And here the mode of reproduction is, occurs, it can be either sexual or asexual during the migration cycles. And this is also applicable to yeast model organism, which can reproduce sexually and asexually. So the next slide is, um, so the, the, the computational methods, um, this is why we use the ABC here, because sometimes it's impossible to evaluate the, a, the, uh, the likelihood function. And by the likelihood function, I mean the mathematical function for, for the model. So in the, slide, the previous slide that I showed you, uh, there is a model and there is just so many processes happening. So it's just too difficult to derive a single function. And this is why the ABC uh, comes in very handy because it can uh, estimate the parameters by not uh, actually directly estimating and knowing the function for the model. So to determine whether recovering a strong signal of selection is even possible, uh, I reduced the model here to the following scenarios. So I simulated 1500 of SNPs, which are known for a yeast genome to be about one third of the number of SNPs per chromosome, uh, population size of 20,000 and recombination rate applicable to recombination rate for a yeast genome hotspots. 
And I reduce my parameter space to as follows. I can have selection, either no selection, uh, selection that occurs at the midpoint of a genome. And the assumption is that the SNPs are equally spaced on the genome or, two, uh, or one third or two thirds of the way. I can have three uh, strengths of migration, either 0%, 20%, 50%, and I can have two modes of reproduction, sexual or asexual during the migration cycles. So after long <laughs> searching for the primary space, and finally with the mode of reduction, I am able to recover a strong signal for my selection. So, so when you think about it, you can think about it as which scenario is more likely. We have no selection, two SNPs under selection, or one SNP under selection. And here we have the true uh, strength of selection, which is expressed in terms of um, selection coefficient, in terms of viability of fitness. So this is the truth, and this is the estimated. So the next part of the project will be to use this ABC method, which is now validated, to use it on the sequenced, uh, on the sequenced yeast uh, genome in the lab that has been done by other lab members. And this is my second project. So in the second project, I investigate the effectiveness of different software in terms of their clustering organisms. Um, to estimate the uh, abundance of different genomes using, uh, in metagenomics. And this is very important um, to be able to identify uh, antibiotic resistant genes, which is crucial for the pathogen detection. So this is the experimental design here. So I'm testing the proximity ligation method and I'm testing the clustering algorithms and the softwares that I use, they use a little bit different algorithms, each of them. So the proximity ligation method uh, detects the interaction between the DNA molecules. And um, so, and we take one sample and we use the shotgun sequencing where we sequence everything, but we don't really know what goes where. So together the high C and the shotgun, uh, we, we use it and we put it into the software. So for this part, the yellow part here, you can see like it's one input, it's a single high C. So there is no variable in high C. So we're just testing the software algorithm performance and the blue box is testing the performance of high C. So <clears throat> here I'm testing three, uh, uh, three softwares, three software, uh, bin 3 c it uses the InfoMap clustering algorithm. Proximera, it is a commercial software done by Phase genomics. It uses also BIN3C, but it also uh, maximizes the completion and minimizes the contamination. And then the MetaTor, it's a likelihood free method. It uses a Louvain algorithm. It's an open source. And this project is, so this is my lab rotation project. And here um, it was done with a collaboration. Um, and here we have Dr. Ben Ridenauer from mathematics and statistics department. He wrote an R function that calculates the Jacquard coefficient, which calculates the dissimilarities of the clusters because our outputs are clusters. Uh, so we want to, uh, so we want to see how well those algorithms perform. Um, and so I use the, the Jacquard coefficient dissimilarity uh, to evaluate the high C and the proximeta. And what I discovered is that the high C method is highly variable. Uh, proximeta is more precise than BIN3C for non filtered reads. So, what I mean by non filtered reads is uh, I use the CHECM. Um, the CHECM criterion after run the software, uh, which uses the genome uh, marker genes uh, to create uh, lineage within the reference genome tree. Um, and I found also there is no significant difference in the dissimilarity bias of replicates per software nor per high C. So the next step will be to uh, sequence everything, use nanopore sequencing. And the purpose of the nanopore sequencing is uh, it's a long, they're long reads. So uh, we can know almost 100% what type of bacteria we have in the sample. And we can see how the software and how these uh, high seas um, 
contribute to the accuracy in, in identifying correctly the genomes. And the sample that I used here was uh, from uh, Dr. Tigold Stelder, where he obtained the samples from the worst wastewater treatment plant um, and helped with some sequencing with alumni. And now we will sequence it with nanopore sequencing. Thank you. Cool, thank you, Martina. We've got one question in the mm -hmm. chat. Okay, let's what are see. the methods used to generate the clusters? What are the methods used to generate the clusters? Uh, well, there are different uh, algorithms to go, right? So, um, so these are the methods. So we have the Louvain, um, which the Metator I haven't, so I ran part of it, but I have to go back and it's more user defined. Um, so these help to see how, um, like how, so they use different algorithms. It's kind of optimization to see how close they are. I don't know how else to explain. There's a lot yeah, of I mathematical. Mean, mm -hmm. I mean, here's a cluster to generate the clusters. We usually use some distance like Euclidean distance or use key, key mean cluster like to oh. generate more sim similar group and the more like this similar groups. Like, so here's like, okay, if uh, this is my question. Mm -hmm. So I don't remember actually if they use k-means or, I mean, I would assume they have to use Euclidean because they have to standardize them. Uh, I would assume, but I could definitely go back and, and look more closely. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So Martina, from what you've learned, is there one of those software packages you would recommend over another? Well, uh, so far, um, Proximeta versus Debian3C. Um, it seems like if you don't, if you want to use all of the data output that you have, I would recommend more Proximeta because it. And again, uh, so we actually emailed Tivold and I. We emailed. Uh, the face genomics. So they don't want to share too much information, but they use some sort of reweighting. Uh, so you get some sort of like a balance optimization between the contamination and completeness. Uh, and it, I, I ran the results and it does perform statistically better when you have a, a higher contamination and lower completeness, when you take just everything you have. But when your data is pretty clean, it seems like there's not much difference. So this is as far as I can tell you right now. Martina, I think we talked about this a little bit uh, in the lab meeting a while ago, but um, do you, uh, has your work informed the um, genome assembly scaffolding methods at all? Like, does that transfer at all? Have you, the have the you genome looked? assembly? So yeah, sorry. So high c can also be used to scaffold contigs for genome assembly. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think it's a really similar problem, but uh, I'm not sure how well these methods translate. I have so, a bunch of high C data. I don't know how to use any of these methods. Do you have so, any ideas? So the high C method specifically is used for the meta genomes when you have a lot of different genomes in one sample through, thrown together. And so it creates some like links in three space before this slicing the cell. So this what helps you with when you have a bunch of different genomes in. Yeah. Uh, would it help also with chromosomes? So that's I think what what maybe I'm okay. looking at when you've got, you know, uh, uh, organism with more than one chromosome. Mm -hmm. Can oh. it also be used to help to put those linkage groups together? Is that sort of what you're thinking, Amanda? Yeah, I mean, I. I the answer is yes, but I'm asking like um, how different methods perform. Right. Okay, like in terms of high C versus others, or in terms of algorithms to assemble those chromosomes. Oh, uh, I know this is like outside of the scope of your work, but I'm I was just curious about that. Connection. Yeah, I I mean I should definitely look into that more closely. Um, more in, ter in terms of chromosomes. I mean, like I. No, it helps to 
assemble them within one cell, therefore one species, one genome, same genome, but it will be a good way. Yeah, I think it has certainly been used uh, for genome assembly. The context that I've seen it in, Amanda, and you might look uh, for some literature on is in uh, with polyploids and being able to assemble um, those homeologous chromosomes where they're very, you know, so similar that they get put together. But if you have the high C sort of markers on the individual linkage groups, you're able to separate them just like with metagenomes. And that's uh, that's where I've that's where I've encountered it in in the literature anyway. If I can add, like uh, Amanda, this uh, for the purpose of like, especially for eukarya, the algorithm are very different that are used for uh, like those algorithms are really made for a microbial community. So they take assumptions, you know, on the size of the genomes of the bacteria. And, um, and there are uh, the algorithms that are used to cluster the, especially, especially like eukaryotic genomes, like plant genomes, where it's, it's uh, widely used or well used. They use different set of algorithm. I have no idea what are the differences, but I know that it's different. Yeah, I've only tested the tools from Phage Genomics and they're quite good, but I don't really know what else is out there. So thank you. Sorry for the weird question. <laughs> no, that's great.